Holy Spirit. Seed Time and Harvest Media presents to you God's Word, which is capable and living for life transformation. May the Lord bless your heart as you encounter His Word. Remain blessed as you sit back and listen to these divine instructions as the servant of God brings the Word of life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for being there, being here today. Speak life, speak hope, speak deliverance into the life and situations of your children. Break yokes, whatever be the age, color, design, or nature of the yoke. Because of the anointing, we said, yokes shall be broken. So, Father, break yokes today. Set captives free. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen. Uh, today, we want to look, um, I want to share with you on achieving the life goals. Achieving the life goals. The life goals. We need to understand the goals that God has set for our lives so that we will not set our own goals Contrary to the goals God himself has set for our lives. We need to understand what goal is and how to dribble the enemy, the Satan's midfielders and Satan's uh, strikers and Satan's goalkeepers. Goalkeeper in this sense are those forces that want to keep us down. Goalkeepers in this sense and context are the forces of darkness that wants to frustrate us after we might have uh, you know dribbled the enemies and driven the ball and we are the verge of putting the ball in the net for the scoreboard to register that we have scored. The goalkeepers can frustrate. The goalkeepers can kick the ball away and it is always painful dealing with the spirit and forces of near success syndrome. At the point and time you are about to heave a sigh, laugh, rejoice, and smile, the thing will turn to the contrary. We want to look at them. God will help me to sell some chips. Uh, tips, sorry, to you on how to pick up the ball that God has put down before you and score the God's ordained goal for your life. We will take uh, our scripture bearing from Isaiah. Isaiah 43 verses 21 and 22 and then verse 26 
These people have I formed for myself. They shall shoot forth my praise. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. But thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. As per introduction, I will let you know that God did not form you unto disgrace. He did not make you, form you, and bring you into this world to decorate the world. You have a purpose to fulfill. You have a mandate you must fulfill. You have. If God needed to decorate the world more than he did, he would have created other species of beautiful flowers. Human beings, mankind, is not for decoration. No matter the tribe, no matter the race, no matter the color of the skin, and no matter the language. Every human being, yourself inclusive, God said, I formed you for myself. Hmm. I'm talking about scoring that God ordained goal. And I am laboring to open your eyes to see that God formed you for himself. For himself. While I was looking at this uh, revelation, I slapped my breasts and called myself by my name and said, God formed you for himself. He did not form me for Satan. He did not form me just for show. Ah, God is not God of showmanship. He is God who takes delight in hiding himself in a redeemed vessel. When he finds a vessel and redeems that vessel from captivity, he takes delight, joy, in hiding himself in earthen vessels. He likes to be the treasure in a despised vessel, earthen vessels. So, the revelation that is coming to you is that your God, if that God is the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the maker of all things, both visible and invisible, he said, I formed you for myself. I did not form you for cancer. I did not form you for darkness. I did not form you for disgrace and shame. I formed you for myself. Another revelation is this. He did not form you for yourself. And he did not form me for myself. 
So, every selfishness, self-centeredness, self-aggrandizement, self-choices, self-wills, should be done away with immediately. He did not form you for yourself. He said, I formed you for myself. They shall shew forth my praise. I should shew forth his praise, showing forth showing forth things, lifestyle, character that should be bringing praises to his name. Doing business. Walking a walk that when others who did not believe in this same God, that I believe, we see, and then we say, ah, to God be the glory. Thank God for this person. Thank God for this life. Thank God for this husband. Thank God for this footballer. Thank God for this actor. Thank God for this musician. Thank God for this journalist. Thank God for this politician. Thank God for this child of God. You know, I, I needed to bring this to you to reformat your damaged value system. Long ago, you have forgotten that he did not form you for Satan. So, Satan does not have the legal rights and the constitutional rights to mesmerize your life or to mess your life up or to usurp or hijack you as if you are his own. No human being originally belongs to Satan. No human being, God did not create any woman, any man, any marriage for Satan and his dark kingdom. I would like you to wake up now and shake off from your life the dust of confusion and misconceptions, misinterpretations, and misunderstandings that have made you think that God actually created you and dropped you on this planet Earth and forgot you. No. I am reading from the scriptures and I am showing you the Bible. These people have I formed for myself. Don't mismanage this. It is a predestination God had for you and for me. In his determinate counsel, he formed you for himself. For himself. They shall shew forth my praise. Noted? Fine. Verse 22. Said. But. You see the problem now. But. Thou hast not called upon me. So, upon who have or whom have you been calling? Upon who? 
But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. Remove Jacob, put your name. In your challenges, in your battles, in your labors, You've been calling on other gods, probably goddesses. God who knows all things said, you have not called upon me, O Jacob, but thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. You are now tired of God. You are tired of God. <laughs> Imagine you getting tired of your doctor. You are damn sick in intensive care unit and then you pick so fence at your doctor. You pick so fence at the oxygen, life support they are offering to you. How then will you survive? It's an indirect way of committing suicide. How can you be weary of God, your maker. That's where the battle seemed to be too tough for you. He said you have been calling and calling and calling things and calling people, but you have not called on him. And he said, I formed you for myself. I did not form you for this person you are calling. In the days of your joy, who, who, who did you call? Right now, that you are having some challenges, who and who have you called upon? Now that things are so tough, who and who have you called? You are calling the government of the day? That's a mistake. The government of the day and our generation seem to have ears around their head for mere decoration. Why are you wasting your energy calling on man that cannot even help himself? God, via this communion, is saying, begin to call on me and believe in me and keep believing in me. Trust in me. No matter how rusted the case may be. Say, I prayed now. He did not answer. Listen to me. God is the strength of Israel. He cannot lie. He said, no man, no woman that come to me will I cast away. And God is God. He is not man. God is not from your village. God is not your kindred man. He is God. Maybe you've called, but the call you sent to him is mere lip shall. Your heart has not called him. And you know you can't deceive him. He knows when you call him. Student, have you called him? When you, your exams are coming, did you call him? Your wife is misbehaving, did you call him? Oh, you went and called your brothers. Man, you called your brothers to come and beat your wife up. You called your sisters to come and deal with your wife. You've called, but you called the wrong candidates. And it is paining God. He said, these people have I formed for myself. They shall shoot forth my praise. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. But thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. I've taken my own decision long ago. That no matter what, 
I will not be weary of God. I will not get tired crying out to him. I will not get tired begging him. I hate to beg except to beg one person and that person is God. In time of joy, in time of sorrows, in time of adversity, in time of prosperity, I call upon him and he has not failed and will never fail. Can I bring your faith and hope back? Can you allow me to give your faith in him, your hope and trust in him, a fresh awakening? Can you allow me to do that? Okay. Let your faith rise from the dead now. You will see wonders and signs without any man laying hands on you. Call on him. Our citizenship is in the heavens. The economy of our nation might have collapsed. The economy of heaven has not collapsed. Have you forgotten that? That we are ambassadors here. Yeah. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. I'm talking to saints of God. I'm talking to children of God. I want to deal with the devil that I've been dealing with you. See how the devil has battered your faith down. I want to batter Satan down now. By awakening your zeal. We will break the rod of the wicked together. As I challenge your faith to respond, God said, look, I did not form you for Satan. I did not form you to mess you up. I am God, I'm not man. I am not man. I did not form you to disgrace you. Both in history and in our contemporary time. Can you show any man, any woman, anywhere that God, Jesus Christ, messed up? You know, this person, the other person, this man, this woman handed his life or situation, battles over to Jesus and Jesus made her a prostitute. Can you show one person that Jesus made a terrorist? That Jesus Christ made a drunkard? That Jesus Christ made a kidnapper? Can you show one? cannot destroy what he built. I formed you for myself. The problem here is you are having a distorted value system. And I want to clear away those clouds to tell you that look, you are not formed. God did not form you for yourself. Don't carry yourself as if you are your own. No. There is a goal he said. To achieve with your life. I'm coming to address that now. If you have allowed me to lay a solid foundation in your spirit now. There is a goal. I formed you to bring praise to my name. You know when you score like this. ah, People will say, Abba, this one is a genius. This one is a legend. This one is a star. And God will laugh and say, he or she is bringing praise to my name. See the honor that is pouring to my throne because of this my daughter and because of this my son. You see what you are passing through? God wants to work out praise. He wants to achieve a goal. He wants to achieve a particular goal through this circumstance. Don't make God score over the bow. Don't make God lose, lose, lose the score. Don't rough tackle God. Don't be weary of God. Don't. Together, you and God, we make a score out of these challenges. I tell you the truth. And praises will come. And they will be pouring unto God. 
The only thing is, he will not share his glory with you. But together, you and God can score a tangible goal. Goal that will make you and God carry the champion's cup. The winning goals. The decisive goal. Hmm. The winning goal. I want to go away from there. Touch verse 6 and then we'll come to talk about the issue of scoring. The God-ordained goal for your life. Verse 26, Isaiah 43. 43, yes. Put me in remembrance. That's God saying. Put me in remembrance. Remind me. Remember me. However, whichever way you interpret it. Remember me. Remind me. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Come, let's talk together about it. But no, 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 no. You've gone to the net to advertise your problem, to seek for advisors and counselors. Is that what the Bible said? The Bible said, put me in remembrance. It did not so say, go to net and tell the whole world about what you are passing through so that people can start uh, making imputes. Themselves that are trying to make impute into your situation. How is their own condition? How is their own situation? Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou. Declare thou. That thou mayest be justified. Number one. The goal of Christianity... is to be like Christ. The goal of Christianity is to be like Christ. Romans 8 verse 29 Romans 8 verse 29 For whom he did for no He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. To be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. This is one goal you must come. One goal you must not fail to score. In one of our meetings, God gave me a few words to share. And one of them was our destination in Christ. Our destination in Christ. Where is our final bus stop in Christ? Where is it? Because if you don't know the final bus stop, you can stop in any bus stop. And that's very dangerous for your soul. You must and should know the final bus stop. People were shocked and surprised. As we were sharing and sharing. And I made them know. That our final destination. In Christ. Is not heaven. They shouted. If it is not heaven. Where then? I told them I said. The final destination. Is to be conformed. To the image of his son. Jesus needed many Jesuses. Yes. God needed many, many Jesuses. People that resemble. People that look alike. 
character wise, attitude wise, like his son, and nothing less than that. And for this conformity to, to be, God will take us through many processes. Hmm. Through many processes. Through many, 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 many fires. Refining fires. Purifying fires. Melting fires. You may not like to hear it, but that's the truth. We are too rigid and rugged by nature. By the nature we inherited from our mama's womb. We can't go to heaven with this kind of nature. We must have a changed nature. So the goal of Christianity is to be like Christ. To be like Christ in obedience. To be like Christ in humility. To be like Christ in total dependence. Christ depended on his father 100 percent to be like Christ in forgiveness one sister shocked all of us she was sick And was admitted in the hospital. They took everything, the urine, the blood, the saliva, the stool. Did all the screenings, checked everything. The doctor was surprised that they could not see anything, not even malaria. <laughs> the normal thing. Doctors do tell us here. Malaria, typhoid. They said, no, no typhoid, no malaria. But then, the doctor asked everybody in the world to please excuse me. Everybody left. This daughter of Abraham said, the doctor sat on the hospital bed beside her and said, can we talk for some time? Can you give me some minutes to talk with you? She said, okay. Doctor said, I think what is eating you up is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is a carnivorous animal. The thing we eat your flesh and drink your blood. It will dry you up. Doctor began to preach to her. And said. Unforgiveness. Is like a foolish man. Who took a cup of poison and drank. Wishing that his enemy will die. Did you get it? You want this person to die. You don't like the person. And then you think that how to kill him is to drink one cup of raw acid. Who will die? You that drank acid is the one that will die. This is what you do when you don't want to conform into the image of God's dear son. You are denying him the right of the firstborn, the firstborn among many brethren. You don't want him to be your senior brother. You want to be senior brother. And it won't work like that. It is one goal. God ordained that you should score. 
Number two, the goal of life is rest. R E S T, rest. That's the goal of life. If in life you have all the mansions or you don't have, you have all the handsomeness or you don't have, you have the fattest bank account or you don't even have anything in your account, you have all the learning or you don't have any learning in your school, you have all the beauty all the connections, all the privileges, all the opportunities. But you don't have rest. I tell you, you are above all men most miserable. The goal of life in general is, do you have rest? Rest is one of the missing essential commodities. I wish I had the whole time to tell you that rest in this context is not even the absence of troubles. No. Rest is not even the absence of challenges or hurdles. Hurdles will always be there. Battles will always be there. Once you are still alive, on this planet Earth, challenges will be coming. So what then is rest? Rest is one of the gifts, principal gifts that God gives to anybody that believes in him. It is the food, the menu, the menu of the heart and of the soul. Let me speak the language of a man that has entered into rest. And that is in Psalm. Let me show you a man that has entered into rest. Psalm 23. You know Psalm 23 maybe? Well, let me... <laughs> Show you verse 5. I like it so much. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. <laughs> Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. This is a man that have Scored the goal I am introducing to you. Enemies are everywhere. But there is this dining table before you. And you are sopping. Dining. Eating. And there is nothing they can do about it. They are there, but they cannot touch you. They are there. They will keep negotiating to know how to turn the table upside down. But with God on your side and God for you and God in you and God for you, you are more than conqueror. That disease, that sickness, that battle, that sin that has been battling your life. Anytime you want to rear your head, this monster will carry you on the two legs and turn you upside down. The thing will end today. It will end today because your faith is receiving the power of resurrection. Your faith is rising with vigor and vitality. He prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. 
Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Isaiah 28, 12. Isaiah 28, verse 12. To whom he said, This is not, or rather, this is the rest. Wherewith you shall cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. What is that rest? Wherewith we may cause the weary to rest. And then the refreshing. It is to trust holy, holy on the living God. Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. That is the rest. My soul at rest. The whole world may be boiling around me outwardly. But inwardly, I am at rest. School fees may not be there for now. Uproars, upheavals, earthquakes. Bad news. There's no more good news anywhere. If you don't have rest, if you have not scored this goal, if you have not put the ball inside the net to get this goal called rest, ah, you may even die before your death. That's why God said, I formed you for myself to score goals with you. Don't disappoint God. I did not form you for cancer, for ulcer, for tumor. I did not form you for Satan. I did not form you for shame, for disgrace. I did not form you for darkness. I formed you for myself to shoot forth my prayer. Number three, the goal of being alive is to live for him. That's the goal. The goal of being alive is not for you to eat, drink, travel, sleep, wake up, Get married, have your wedding, wonderful trad, wonderful white wedding. As good as those things are. That's not the central reason why you are alive. You are alive to live for him. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 20. For you are bought with a price. I'm talking to the redeemed. I'm talking to the choosings. I'm talking to children of God that are listening to me. You are bought with a price. What was this price? Blood currency. Blood currency, not euro currency, not dollar currency, not CDs. I don't know the currency of your nation, you know it. Not Naira currency, not Nigerian currency, not Ugandan currency, not Cameroon currency, Sefa, France, no. Blood. He laid down his life so that you will live. Then as you live, you don't live for yourself again. You live for the man who bought you. For you are bought with a price. 
Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirits, which are God's. Chapter 7, 1 Corinthians, verse 23. Verse 23. Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. You, ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. I believe you got it. Don't serve any other thing but the man that bought you. Don't serve doubt. Don't serve unclean spirits. Don't serve the trending things of, of our time. Don't serve them. That's the meaning of be not ye the servants of men. What human beings introduces, you bow to them. The inventions of man, the ideas of man, the counsels of man. And you are serving those things. He said, be not ye the servants of men. For you are bought with a price. He took Jesus. Something serious. And that is his life. Sinless, spotless life. He laid it down for sinful sin loaded human beings that's Christianity that is the gospel that while we were yet sinners we that are called men of God today pastors today, pastor's wife today apostle, senior apostle bishop, all the titles we bear before you became bishop and apostle and evangelist or whatever spiritual office or title you bear can you remember the person, the kind of person you used to be? What the devil did to you and what the devil did with you. You were helpless, completely helpless, totally helpless until Jesus came and broke the jaw of the dragon and opened the claws of the, of, of the dragon and brought you out. And then took you into his beauty theater and then beautified you, empowered you. You are now a sought after. Your voice counts. You see? Your utterances is now a force to reckon with. Mm. He said, I bought you with a price. I paid heavily to make you my own. You don't have right to serve men. Amen. Number four. The goal of patience is to have him do it for you. Have you scored that goal yet? Patience. Patience. I will wait. Lord, help me to wait. Help me to wait. The goal of you waiting for him is to have him do it for you and take the glory. Let me not do it for myself. And let me not allow any flesh, any human being, to come and do it. Let God do it. Let God give me husband. Let God give me admission. Let God give me work. Let God give me that work. Let God give me the business to do. Let God help me to graduate. I will wait, no matter how tall. It becomes. 
His grace will help me to wait. As you wait, before you know it, the ball is on the net. You are now a man of patience. And patience is one of the costliest peers. It is a treasure. Patience. In a generation full of impatience. Impatience. The lawyer cannot wait. The judge cannot wait. The policeman cannot wait. The soldier cannot wait. The politician cannot wait for God to give him the throne. No. He must get it by himself. The preacher will not wait for the day and time of his manifestation. No. He manifests himself by himself. This madam refuses to wait until God brings the baby. The reason why God is delaying, I do not know. Nobody knows. We cannot know everything that God is doing now. If we know everything the way God knows it and understands it, then we are God. Don't make God lose the champions cup. Oh. Don't make God lose this champions cup. Give him a goal that we give him the cup. Patience. Patience. What about time, 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 time? Excuse me. God's time is the best. By the time he comes, you will know that he did not come late. He, he, no, no, no. He doesn't come later. Don't the vision. Don't the promise. May tarry. Delay. He said, wait for it. Allow me to finish what I am cooking. Allow me, allow me, allow me. May God help you to give God this call. May you give God this call. May you score this call. It is one of the goals that we help our team to win the cup. It is one of the winning goals. Winning goals. That when you put it on the net like this, you confuse Satan's goalkeeper. That demonic goalkeepers will not catch this ball. I tell you, the cup will be ours. It will be credited to the entire team that this team Christians, Christianity, God of Christians won this match. Amen. The goal of hope is to avoid being ashamed. Romans 5. Romans chapter 5. Scoring the goals of life. God ordained goals. Goals. Chapter 5. Verses 4. And 5. And patience. Experience. And experience. Hope. And hope make it not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. One thing I want to let you know is hope has grand parents so You need to check the family tree. The family tree of hope. Let's go back and check the family tree. Reading from verse 3. Of Romans 5. And not only so. But we glory in tribulations. Are you into tribulations? You are not the only one. Paul was into it. Moses had his share. Nehemiah had his share. Ezra had his share. Joshua had his own share. Um, 
Deborah, the prophetess, had her own share. Um, Paul of Tarsus had his share. Uh, Stephen had his own share. Anybody that must go to heaven, you, you have to come and cut your own share of the cake. The, 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 the matter is, how do you manage tribulations? Paul said, we glory in it. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. If, have you seen it now? You cannot be patient by laying of hands. God will put you into the machine, processing machine, and begins to process both your temperament, your thoughts, your will, your mind, your affection, your desire, you know, all the rubbish, all the trashes, all, all, all the Adamic nature. The machines will be you know, processing it and removing the chaffs and dealing with you until the tribulation works out patience. You score now. You are now a person of patience. Then you don't stop at patience. You move again. You move again. The first time of the match is gone. It's now the second time. And patience gives you experience. As you wait like this, you are waiting. People are talking. People are mocking. People are jeering. People are accusing. People are snuffing. People are laughing at you. They are making jests and joke of you. Now, if you can harness those troublous times and insults and assaults, you gather them together it will register experience. When you score experience, you don't stop there. You move the ball forward. And then you score hope. And immediately you score hope. The Bible said, you cannot be ashamed. Hmm. Amen. Another point. The goal of prayer is to have him do it and take the glory. To have God do it. Let God do it. Let God do it. That's why we pray. Oh God, look at my situation. Look at my leg. Look at the doctor's report. Oh God. Look at souls that are perishing. Oh God. What is so bad and wrong with my life that you cannot use this life? Use my life. I want to become an answered prayer to the cry of my generation and to the cry of my family and to the cry of the church. Look at my nation crying. My nation is crying. Not for politicians that are crying for a Messiah. Can you make me a Messiah? Give me oil. The kind that breaks all manner of yokes. Give me spiritual womb. Womb that can deliver nations for you. And you are praying like that. You are saying, God, I can't do it. Come and do it. And take all the glory. That is what prayer does. If you fail to pray, you are actually arrogant. Nobody is as proud as you are. You are telling God, you should go and sit down, you can do it. You should go and sit down, you can handle the situation. Anytime you did not pray, you are telling God, please shift. I can do it by myself. And I want to tell you, you are going to meet headlong with shame. You will collide with disgrace. You can't handle that Goloyato. You can't handle that Seneca Reb. You can't handle Nebuchadnezzar. It's too strong for you. You can't. 
You can't even handle his Nebuzaradan. His chief of army staff, you can't even handle that one. Can you handle a Herod? Can you handle a Jezebel? Can you handle an Atalaya? You like this. Can you handle barrenness? Can you handle impotency? Can you handle cancer? Can you handle divorce? Can you handle asthma? Can you handle liver kidney problem? Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Anytime you fail to talk to God about your plight, about your fears, your fears, Jacob was sincere. Jacob, he was sincere. When he prayed, I said, Lord, deliver me from the hands of my brother Esau, for I fear him. That's a sincere prayer. Deliver me from the hands of my brother Esau, for I fear him. Have you prayed like that? Have you tabled it before God? The goal of prayer is to have God, allow God do it. To resign, to retire, and give God the chance, the chance for him to do it and listen, to do it in his own time and in his own terms. Time and terms. Not in your own time. Not in your own terms. That's the goal of prayer. That's why we pray. The goal of giving is to be blessed. Acts 20.35 Acts 20.35 hmm. Achieving the God ordained goals for your life. Hmm. I have showed you all things how that so laboring, so laboring, so laboring, you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The last point for now, for today, we will pray. The goal of trials is to build godly character. It is not to kill you, it's not to damage you. That's the goal of the trials you are passing through. Whatever be the color, the age of the trials, no matter how short or long, no matter how fiery and also frightening and threatening. I want to tell you your life is not in the hand of that teacher or lecturer called trial. Know it that your life is in the hand of God who is love. God may be a tough coach but he coaches in love. He may appear to be a tough coach, but he coaches in love. The goal of that trial, the trials, is to build godly character. What we take men to hell is character. And what we take men to heaven is the character. Character, character. The wrong one will take you to hell. The godly kind, and that one is born out of trials, persecutions. That one takes people to heaven. To heaven. As I summarize it, I want to say, when everything shall come to pass, the only thing that will stay with you is character. 
The only thing that will stay with you and go to hell with you or to heaven with you are the goals you scored. If you score against yourself, we've seen players who scored their own team out of carelessness, mismanagement of the ball, mismanagement of the ball, they scored, he scored himself, his own team. We've seen goalkeepers who allowed a weak goal to enter the net. Goal that should not enter the net out of the carelessness of the goalkeeper. The ball entered the net. The team were in grief. The enemy were jubilating. Don't mismanage these challenges. Don't score yourself. Don't be tired of God. You see all of these matches. I want to tell you, there is no friendly match in the realm of the spirit. Devil does not play friendly match. He means every match with you. You have to also mean business. Make it a do or die affair. Each match, may you score. Receive grace out of these things that are happening. This is just a ball. I would like you to see it like that. At the end of the day, when God shall come, he will surely come. He will come. You and God are jubilating. And people will say, eh? Cancer is a terminal disease. But people will say, her God, his God, healed him. What? Which God is that? Nebuchadnezzar said there's no God at all until Daniel showed him a God that made him bow the knee. He now said, uh, there is no God that can deliver like this. God was on the throne before that time, but Daniel and God played the ball and then put it in the net. Nebuchadnezzar was on his knees. He said, I didn't know that there is a God that can deliver people from the flaming fire. From the lion's den. I, I didn't know that there is a God that can give a woman babies without womb. You have to prove God to be God. Let's use this ball together. God is saying, don't disgrace me. Oh. Don't make our team lose this match. Don't score yourself. Don't score our team. He raised Abraham. Do you know why? To use him to make a score. To prove that with one man, God can make a nation. That was the goal God set for Abraham. Today, Abraham is the father of many nations. He was one. He played with God. They dribbled and dribbled and dribbled and dribbled. Lack of children, all of that. Attack here and there. Blah, 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 blah. Lot came with his own herdsmen. Like at the end of the day, the testimony is Abraham is a father of many nations. He's called the goal. Joseph Jacob scored the goal while God kicked him as a football or like a football to Egypt. He did not disgrace God. He was ostracized, separated from his own brethren and from his own father for around 13, 14, 15 years. When he sat on the throne, the kingdom raised their hands like this and there were jubilation everywhere. They say, go! God has scored. Using the ball of envy and jealousy and hatred from his own brethren 
God used that ball to make a score. God can use the sickness, diseases, delay. You see this delay? It is a football. You see what the doctor said about you? That thing is a football. It is a football. You want to start a business and there is nothing to start with. Eh? God likes it difficult. When it is so difficult and rusted and complicated, that's when God takes the best of the glory out of it. Allow him scoring the God ordained goals. Goals for your life. Let us pray. Can you help me and join me talk to God and say, Lord, I surrender. I surrender the ball. I surrender the field. You know one thing I like, I like about God? He plays all wings. Ah. He plays all wings. He's a midfielder. <laughs> He's a striker. He has his formation. 442. 442. If you agree to play with him, to play with God, no hell, no, no demonic striker will score God. We are the one that is giving the allowances for men to mock at our God. Talk to him and say, Father, I submit and surrender the ball. That thing that I made you cry, 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 cry. And Satan is saying, cry, cry, baby. Cry, cry, baby. Stop wasting those tears. Invest the tears. Invest it. Tears are powerful. Take it and invest it wisely. Stop wasting it. On the laps, on the bosom of Jehovah, shed those tears. And say, Lord, I depend only on you. Almighty God, I depend only on you. Thou, my Savior, I depend only on you. Thou, Lord Jesus, I depend only on you. Thou, my Redeemer. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Convert this message. Let it become bread of life to your people. Let, become, let it become an eye opener. Let it become anointing. Breaking yokes. Use this message. Use this message. Lord. To give your people spiritual awakening. To revive their faith. To flush out faithlessness, doubts, and unbelief. Clear the clouds. Remove the clouds. Tear the veils. Remove the viruses from their spiritual system, their value system. Reformat their value systems, Lord. Do wonders in their lives. And do wonders through their lives. May the goals, Lord, you've ordained to score with each life, each ministry and minister that listened to me, may the devil and human nature never thwart it. Lord, supply grace that you and this your child will use this football, this ball, to score the devil and take all the glories. In the name of Jesus, may this your child never score herself. May this your child never score himself. May this home, this marriage never score themselves. Lord, empower your children to collaborate with you, to run with you with the ball, to break, Lord, the defenses of the enemy and to dribble the satanic goalkeeper and to score goals that we give your kingdom the champion score. Thank you, Father. 
Let this message continue to do wonders in the lives and situations of my listeners. Even those that we listen after now. Bless them and bless them and bless them. Help them and help them and help them, Lord. That each ball that is before them now will never go over the bar. Let it not go over the bar. Let it enter the net. And may the scoreboard register it. That goal has been scored out of this play. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, I have blessed you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. This message will go a long way in your spirit to do wonders. In your health, in your situations, I tell you, it will do wonders. Keep chewing it. Keep chewing it. And then the word shall be made flesh. You will be empowered to deal and keep dealing with demonic dwarfs and demonic giants. None of them shall be able to stand against you from this day henceforth. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next week. God willing, I will be here to bring forth the word of God to you again. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We believe you have been blessed by these instructions. For further inquiries or counsel, please contact Vale of Ibo, Seed Time and Harvest Revival Labels, OGD, Anambra State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 081 950 or 081-157-60673 Email More Sure Word of Prophecy at Gmail More Sure Word of Prophecy 77 at gmail.com Website www.veilofhebron.com May the Lord grant you grace to walk in the light of the truth you have received in Jesus' name. Amen.